Hello and welcome back to Aviation Ivy. Go where you feel the most alive. I am Shantanu and today we will study about instrument landing system or ILS. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Introduction The function of an instrument landing system is to provide pilot or autopilot of a landing aircraft with the guidance to and in some cases along the surface of the runway. This guidance must be very of this guidance must be of very high integrity to ensure that each landing has a very high probability of success. This facility is useful to a landing aircraft in all weather conditions but plays a very vital role under poor visibility and low cloud ceiling condition as shown in this figure. The basic philosophy of ILS is that ground installations located in the vicinity of the runway transmit coded signals in such a manner that the pilot is given information indicating position of his or her aircraft with respect to the correct approach path. Three different signals are required to accomplish this and are transmitted by three different equipments. In this picture, we could see an aircraft trying to align itself with the runway. Assume this to be the runway where the aircraft is going to land. So it needs to follow a correct approach path. So the best input which a pilot could get from the signals of different equipment that how much left or right pilot aircraft is from the correct approach path or how much above and below the correct approach path the pilot is and what is the distance at which the pilot needs to touch down. So if we get these three informations correctly, the pilot could easily land an aircraft on the runway. So one signal gives the information to the pilot indicating the position of the aircraft relative to extended center line of the runway or the azimuth guidance meaning how much left or how much right the aircraft is from the correct approach path given by the localizer. Second signal gives information indicating the aircraft position related to the required angle of descent meaning how much above and or how much below the aircraft is from the correct approach path given by the glide path whereas the third signal provides a distance from some specific point which is given by the distance measuring equipment or DME and the distance is from the aiming point. Components of an ILS They are majorly three components. First is a localizer. In this image you can see an array of localizer positioned very close to the runway. Second is the glide path antenna. This is the glide path antenna also located very close to the runway. And DME or distance measuring equipment co-located with glide path. This is the DME co-located with glide path. Now we'll learn that where are these instruments placed so that they could align the aircraft on the correct approach path. So if this is the runway in use or if this is the way the aircraft is coming, the localizer is placed at the end of the runway at about 1000 feet from the runway end. And the glide path is placed at about 300 to 400 meters from the threshold. So these are the specific positions where the instrument should be placed so that they could provide the guidance in a very precise manner. Now, the very first equipment, localizer. Localizer coverage is provided from the center of the localizer antenna which is placed here. This is the runway in use meaning the aircraft will land in this way and this is the end of the runway and here is the localizer placed. So the localizer coverage is provided from the center of the localizer antenna system to a distance of 25 nautical miles within 10 degrees on either side of the extended center line of the runway and to a distance of 17 nautical miles between 10 degree and 35 degrees. So the coverage is given in this way that it will cover up to 25 nautical miles and 10 degree on either side of the 
रनवे सेंटर लाइन करेक्ट गाइडेंस इंफॉर्मेशन वुड बी अवेलेबल इफ एन एयरक्राफ्ट विद इन सेवन डिग्री एलिवेशन विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द हॉरिजॉन्टल द रेडिएशन फ्रॉम द लोकलाइजर एंटीना सिस्टम प्रोड्यूसिस अ कंपोजिट फील्ड पैटर्न विच इज एम्पलीट्यूड मॉड्यूलेटेड बाई नाइंटी हर्ट एंड वन फिफ्टी हर्ट्स ऑन अ कैरियर फ्रिक्वेंसी नाउ दिस लोकलाइजर जनरेट्स टू लोब्स अप टू ट्वेंटी फाइव नोटिकल माइल्स वन हैज वन फिफ्टी हर्ट्स फ्रिक्वेंसी एंड अनदर हैज नाइंटी हर्ट्स फ्रिक्वेंसी वींग फ्रॉम द एयरक्राफ्ट कमिंग पोजिशन ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड the aircraft will intersect a frequency of 90 hertz and on the right hand side it will intersect a frequency of 150 hertz to an aircraft making an approach on a localizer the depth of the modulation of the radio frequency carrier due to 150 hertz is predominant on the right hand side and that due to the 90 hertz one is predominant on the left hand side the two tones have equal amplitude along the standard center line of the runway meaning if the aircraft is coming on the correct approach path and somehow it is too much on the right it will intersect the frequency of 150 hertz and the inputs given to the pilot that it needs to shift the aircraft a little bit left so that it could align with the correct approach path same is the case with 90 hertz if the aircraft is coming a bit left with respect to the runway center line the inputs will give that it should be corrected to right side so that it could get the correct approach path the second equipment is the glide path the glide path transmits a radio signal which establishes a glide angle along the approach course defined by the localizer vertical deflection is presented to the pilots on the screen of the cockpit that he or she is above or below the glide angle The glide path have an azimuth coverage of 8 degrees on either side of the extended runway center line. In this picture it is given that this is the frequency of the localizer. Localizer frequencies can be seen in a horizontal manner on either side of the runway center line. But the glide but the glide path frequencies are in a vertical manner. This 90 hertz lobe is above the glide slope and this 150 hertz lobe is below the glide slope radiation from the glide path antenna system produces a composite field pattern in the same manner as it was in the localizer which is amplitude modulated by 90 hertz and 150 hertz tone on a carrier frequency the pattern is arranged to provide a straight line descent path in the vertical plane containing the center line of the runway with the 150 hertz tone predominating below the path and 90 hertz tone predominating above the path assume this aircraft is coming in this direction to land on this runway so the 90 hertz lobe will represent above the glide slope and 150 hertz lobe will be below the glide slope so if the pilot is too high on the glide slope it will the instruments of the aircraft will intersect with the 90 hertz frequency and the inputs given to the pilot will be that you are too high on the glide slope please come down and in the same manner if the aircraft is coming too low it will intersect with the 150 hertz frequency indicating that it needs to get a bit up to get into the correct glide slope the localizer and the glide path is actually trying to tell the pilot that how much he or she is deviated from the correct glide slope the glide path and the localizer is trying to form a cone it's trying to form as shown in the picture it is trying to form a cone which will drive the aircraft exactly at the aiming point so if the pilot is above the glide slope and towards the left it will come into this area if the pilot is below the glide slope and towards right it will come into this area if the pilot is above the glide slope and towards the right it will come into this area and if the pilot is low and to the left it will come in this area so this image 
shows two lines intersecting this position is the position of correct slope as here in the aircraft so any deviation would lead the aircraft to go in any of the quarters shown and as shown in this picture that aircraft is by the help of localizer it is towards right and with the help of glide path it is towards upward so right and up meaning right and up meaning in this slope so as you can see the intersection lines are here and the it's in the it's in this quarter meaning it's here now third one and the last equipment distance measuring equipment or dme that dme equipment on the aircraft is very simple to use the pilot having only to tune the equipment to the appropriate frequency and read the display once the dme has logged on to the ground transponder because the distance measurement taken by the aircraft DME receiver is from air to ground, DME records slant height. Note this point. It records the slant height means the actual distance between the point of landing and the aircraft. DME records the slant ranges which are greater than the actual distance between the ground facility and the ground position of the aircraft. Which means that actually the aircraft According to the ground, it's 4 nautical miles, but according to DME, it is actually 1.4 nautical miles from the actual touchdown position. Hope I could make you able to understand the instrument landing system. Do visit our website www.aviationavi.com and we have started a new series, Just Aviation Moments by Aviation Avi or JAM, which are content of short videos to bring you more content in a shorter time. Do like, share, subscribe our work because only your support is our motivation. You can connect to us from our LinkedIn pages also. Thank you.